panoramic views of New York City. Jillian says I say panoramic funny, so I'll say it really, really clear. Panoramic views of New York City. We're here in New York City doing panoramic views. It's November and time to be thankful for another giveaway. We've got a great setup here from Syrup. They're going to give away $1,266 worth of equipment. You've got your genie, a ball head, a short track, a bag that all goes in, the cable that makes it run. This is a fabulous setup. Go to dustlinelens.com and sign up today. Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Sign Lens, we're here in New York City. We're going to shoot some panoramic shots with our Syrup Mini. Their latest software update to the Syrup Mini gives you the ability to do panoramic images, which is the ability to stitch together several images. The Syrup Mini sets and moves the camera for you. You can choose the overlap so you know how much they want to overlap to be able to get a great image. I've been excited about this. I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and here in New York, we had a great time. So let's talk about how to set this up to get those panoramic images. You go into settings, it's gonna ask you your camera crop sensor. So you go in there, I put full frame because I'm shooting on a full frame camera, but you've got all the different camera sizes in there you can choose so that it knows what kind of camera you're on. Then you go to the focal length of your lens. This is really important. Several times I had it set at 85 millimeters and I put my 45 on. And all of a sudden I'm going, this overlap doesn't look right and that's because I had not punched in the right lens. So you gotta make sure you change that every single time you change to a different lens. Your aspect ratio, ratio 3-2 for a full frame uh, sensor. Orientation, it gives you the ability to shoot portrait or landscape. I love portrait because you can get in tighter, get more detail, and you can stitch them together. It's just a beautiful way to work, but the landscape works as well. So, but I chose most of mine in portrait. The way to do that is I just took the crossbar off from my syrup setup and just used the L bracket, and that gave me my portrait mode. Once you put in your camera and your lens settings, you now can put in the settings for your panoramic view. You have everything from 360, a complete circle, down to as, as small an area of coverage that you want to do. It can just be a few degrees, 20 degrees, 40 degrees, whatever you want to do, it's your decision. You can look at it and preview it, move it, and move your camera around and be able to see exactly where it's going to cover. The overlap is critical. I'm running at least a 40% overlap on my longer lenses and up to 75% overlap on my wide angle lenses because it's gonna help you get rid of some of that distortion. The most important thing is that your tripod has got to be level. You've got to level the head of the tripod to do this panoramic view or your panoramic view is gonna to start to tilt off to the side or tilt, so it's gotta be completely level. The way I do it is I take the Syrup Mini off from there, I look down at the bottom, there's a bubble right on the top of this ball head. I get that bubble completely centered so that I know that the top of this is completely centered and level, then I put my Syrup Mini on and now I can do a 360 without any problems. We're gonna head back now to the studio. We're gonna stitch these things together and we're gonna see what we got. So we're back from New York City and it's time to stitch our images together. I want to show you exactly how I do this. First, I uh, calibrated my monitor using my Spider 5 uh, Pro Elite. And uh, once that's calibrated now, we're gonna set that aside here and I'm gonna jump into Bridge. I always start in Bridge with these because I just find it easy to work there. I have taken all my images, I sorted through them in Bridge, I put them in folders by the different uh, views that I shot. So I show the beginning and the end, and so I folder them, you see them on the side here, I've got uh, New York from Brooklyn number one, two, three, four, and so I get them all together, and then I go in, I select the one that I have, I'm gonna rotate them to get them in the right orientation. So once I select all of them, just command O for open, and it says, you sure you wanna do 11? Of course I'm sure I wanna do 11. So now in camera raw, I'm gonna take the image in the middle, the one I'm the most interested in. I'll make a few adjustments in exposure. I love clarity, so I'm gonna take the clarity, I'm gonna push that up a little bit. Just makes things a little more poppy, which I love. Poppy, that's a, a technical term, more poppy. I'm not gonna play with the vibra vibrance or the saturation. The contrast is good here, although I may push it up just a little bit on the contrast. Open up my shadows just a touch. I'm not going to do a lot here. I'll go up here now and I will select all and I will sync the, the settings and then I will open them all. Open image. And that's going to bring all these up uh, into Photoshop, which is where I need to end up. 
Okay, so once all of our images are up and open here, it's very simple. We just go to File, down to Automate, and Photo Merge. What it's gonna do now is it brings up a window here that gives us the opportunity to merge these together. If you just simply click on Add Open Images, that's all the images that are open in Photoshop, we're gonna do auto, and we're not gonna try, I've tried perspective, I've tried cylindrical, I've, I've done all of these, and you know what, time and time again, I just go back to auto, and it gives me the best rendition, completely the best rendition. I'll just hit okay, and this is now gonna take these images, and it's gonna stitch them together. We had enough overlap, and I, that's why I shoot a 40% or more overlap. If I'm going to a wide angle lens, I shoot a larger overlap because when they're trying to match these and merge the layers and find the things that look the same, it needs enough overlap to be able to make that look good and not to start to distort your image. image. So the more overlap you give it, the better. I mean, you don't want to do 100% overlap or you wouldn't move the camera. But if you're doing 40% overlap, then that gives you enough area for Photoshop to be able to find the things that look the same and to stitch them together. Even still, I was having trouble with some of these where one image would end up just not quite having enough overlap for Photoshop to be able to figure it out and it would kick it off on the next, I like dot underneath the image saying they didn't know what to do with it. So that overlap is pretty important. So this take a couple minutes for this to stitch this together. So you can select all these images in uh, Bridge and just go to File, Photo Merge and just open that dialog box there. Uh, but the reason I do it the way I do is because I really want to be able to control the images. I want to make changes to the images and sync them and just kind of make them look a little nicer there. So, but you can go directly from Bridge. You can do this in Lightroom as well. Very easy to do it in Lightroom. I just love this process. So there's my stitched image. I just love these things when they come up. I mean, it's just so fun. You can see the merge. It curves a little bit on that left side in this one. You see how the, the horizon curves just a little bit. Uh, but actually, it's a fabulous image straight out of the box. It looks really good. Quick, I'm just going to flatten the image and now I will take and crop it and I can get my crop exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to push this way out and pick up the Statue of Liberty and there's my image. I've got a bunch of area that is not uh, not done. I'm just lazy and so I just take the healing brush and uh, I just go like this and oh that guy is going to be just fine. When you use the healing brush like this, it's important you put it on content aware and also to understand that this only works on the 2015 version or later of Creative Cloud Photoshop. But it works fabulously in those versions. And my image painted in ready to go. Now I could take this into Perspective Warp, try to pull up this end down here and that's probably something I will do. But there's how to stitch these together, just a very simple way. I shot these horizontal because I wanted really a lot of detail in the images and that's the reason I chose to do that is because then you just get these gorgeous large, I mean this thing is huge and you could print it out and make great prints of it because you really have a series of 11 images shot vertically here that are stitched together. So a gorgeous view. So let's take a look at some of these panoramic views in New York City. That Serp Mini is fabulous for this because it, it just calculates your lens, your overlap, it gives you the panoramic view, you can repeat it. When you try to hand hold these sometimes, you just, you get up and down and you, your crop becomes a problem later on, it really does. I just think it's a fabulous process, I love doing it, it was fun doing it in New York. So get out, do some of your own, post them on our Facebook, let us know what you're doing. Keep in contact with us, so keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. Jolene and I are super excited, we're going to Australia! June of 2017, we're headed to the Vivid Light Show in Sydney. We want to take a group of you with us. We're going to go on a photo tour. Sydney Light Show and do you want to go to the Great Barrier Reef or do you want to go to Ayers Rock? Go to theslimelens.com and let us know where you want to go. You've only got till the end of November and then we're going to make a decision, set our itinerary and we're going to gather us all together and off to Australia we go. Panoramic view!